Hi everybody, it's Miss Betsy. How do you like this fancy new thing I've got here? Have you ever been in a totally dark place before? And it's kind of scary when you are. Maybe a cave or a basement or it's a dark, dark night with no stars and cloud cover. You know what? People get scared of the dark sometimes because they, they can't see. But flashlights were made for dark places. And now I've got a fancy one that does all kinds of things. I also have this little flashlight one that's kind of fun too. Well, did you know that there's a verse in the Bible about flashlights? Let's find out. Psalm 119, 105, one of my favorite scriptures. And it's practically in the very middle of the Bible. But it says, your word, the Bible, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. What? A lamp unto my feet and a light to my path? God's word is like a flashlight for us? Okay, let's talk about this a little bit more. Flashlights are made to help you in dark places. As this says, it's a, it's a lamp. In the old days, in Bible times, their lamps weren't, didn't have batteries in them. They weren't like this. They were like a bowl that had oil in it and a, and a little wick that came out. And they could light the wick and it would light, it would be their light and they would kind of carry it like a bowl. I don't have one of those to show you, but you can kind of imagine that would be kind of hard to carry and it you could spill the oil and your light would go out. Maybe you guys have gone camping and you've had camping lanterns. Maybe you have a flashlight in a place in your home that when your power goes out, even candles can be a light. Well, God's word is not a physical light to us, but it's a spiritual light to us. So let's talk about what that means. It helps us understand how to live our lives in a way that God is showing us where he wants us to go and what he wants us to do, even, even when things are confusing, even when we have a time where we don't understand what we're supposed to do, God's word can shed light on the direction and the understanding of what he wants us to do. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. God wants you and me to know how to live. He does not want us to be lost in the dark. He doesn't want to be mixed up about which way we're supposed to go or how we're supposed to live. God has given us the Bible as a tool. Yes, this is a tool to help us to know his will, to know more about him, and to know his way for us. Since the creation of the world, God has used light to help people see, and he's used his word to help us understand who he is and what he's doing on earth. He shows us that what he does for us and what he can do for us in all those who believe him. Now, in Psalm 119, verses 1 and 2, just a few chapters back, Psalm 119, verses 1 and 2. Listen to this. You're going to love it. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. He's talking about the moon and the stars and the sun. It gives light. It gives direction. The days pour out speech and the night reveals knowledge. The heavens, including the sun, the moon, and the stars, are things that we see with our very own eyes. And these great objects show us the greatness of God. It's amazing to see those lights in the sky. But God is bigger than everything that he's made. God created it. He made everything, including the things that we see and the things that we don't see. God loved people, and he prepared a perfect place where they could live and see his glory and use the blessings that he gave them for his glory and for their good. Now, God loves you, and he knows everything about you. How do I know that? How do I know that he knows every thought in your head and every word you're going to say? Well, let me pull out my flashlight. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 4. Listen to what God says about you. 
O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, Lord, you know it all together. Wow. He knows all about us. He knows our thoughts. He knows what we're going to say. He knows what we're going to think. He knows what we're going to say to our parents, our, our siblings, our friends today. Jesus even said that God knows exactly how many hairs are on our head. He knows the stars. He's giving them all names. And he knows their names. And he knows your name. And he knows my name. And everybody else's name who's ever lived. And anybody's name that has ever lived. And ever will live. Wow, that's incredible. Even our greatest computers cannot know all the things that God knows. He knows things and he's all powerful. He is perfectly holy. He never sins. He never has sinned and he never will sin. God is so pure and holy that he must do something about all those things that are unholy, which is not perfect. God is pure and he will never allow sin and evil to be around forever. He is just and he will punish sin. Now, because God is holy and pure, he's got to do something about the sin and evil and the injustice in the world. Do you know what sin is? Some people say that sin is evil, and that is right. It can be, and others say sin is bad, and that's right, too. Some people talk about, talk about sinful thoughts or sinful desires. Other people speak about sinful deeds or th sinful words. We try to put all these to, ideas together and define sin in this way. Sin is anything that you think or do or say that does not please God or obey his word. In 1 John 1 verses 8, it says, that's way back in the New Testament, almost to the end. It says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. Everybody has sinned. Romans 3.10 says, let's go to Romans, back a little bit ways. Romans 3.10 says, as it is written, none is righteous. No, not one. No one has lived perfectly except for Jesus. He is the Holy One. Can you think of some sins that children your age might be doing? They may, they may say the word hate. Sometimes that's a bad word in our families. Or they may be sinfully angry at someone. They're so mad that they're going to be revengeful and try to get them back. That is sinful. They may be jealous that somebody got a better present than them or what they thought was a better present. Or they may be getting more attention than they are. Maybe they said some mean words about somebody or they called somebody a mean name that was hurtful. Maybe they hit somebody or pushed somebody or tripped somebody, disobeying their teacher or their parents or another adult told them the right thing to do and they didn't do it. Have you done any of those things? I know I have sinned and I bet you have sinned too. Do you believe that? We are all born with a sin nature. It's a desire to sin. We want to sin. You and I want things our way. We don't want God's way all the time. God loves us and he must punish sin. And eventually that would be punishing us. But when the first people, Adam and Eve, sinned, God put them out of the garden as their punishment. They no longer had that good relationship with God like they planned before. Punishment is being separated from God forever. And sin is darkness and keeps you from finding the way to God. We need our flashlights. But one day, unless your sin and mine is gone, we will be in a place of darkness and suffering and not able to live with God. But God has a wonderful plan. He's got a wonderful plan to save us so that you and I don't have to be punished 
the punishment we deserve for our sin. God the Father sent his son, Jesus. He sent his son, Jesus. He came to earth as a little baby and he obeyed perfectly. He lived perfectly. He was perfectly God and perfectly man. I know it's amazing, but it's true. God's word has it right here for us to read about. Jesus lived a sinful life, sinless life on earth and obeyed God perfectly in everything he was supposed to do. He willingly went to the cross and bled and died to take the punishment for our sin, my sins and your sins, the punishment we deserve. We should have died and we should have been punished for our sin, but Jesus took our place and died for all the sins of all the people who would ever believe in him. That's you and me. This is the only way that your sin and my sin can be forgiven. Jesus died and took the punishment for all of our sins. And then to prove that Jesus took the uh, payment for our sins, Jesus rose again from the dead, just like the Bible said he would. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, again back here in the back, Verses 3 through 5, listen to what this says. For I delivered you of, all, of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried and he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to, to the twelve. That is telling us that Jesus died, he was buried. He was raised the third day. And then he appeared to Cephas and the 12, the 12 disciples. Jesus died for our sins, rose again from the dead, and now sits at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. And now because of what the Lord Jesus did for you and for me, our sins are forgiven. And Jesus can help us to live a godly life. In John chapter 20, let's turn over here to John in the New Testament. Chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. Listen to this. This is kind of like the purpose of what the flashlight, God's word, is showing us to do. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing that you may have life in his name. Wow. Jesus did lots and lots of miracles. He healed a lot of people. He helped a lot of people. He showed us how to love and to care for each other. All of those things were written so that we might believe. He did amazing things. He told us how to live. And he was the perfect sinless son of God. And he was a perfect man. He did that so that we would believe in him. To believe really means just to trust him. To know in your heart that Jesus is the son of God. He is rose again from the dead. And he's the only one that could die for us. Because we know that we're a sinner. And that we can't get rid of the sin all by ourselves. We have to be willing to let God change our hearts on the inside and then thereby by believing have life in his name to help us have life means that he has forgiven our sin and that he's working inside you to help you to want to do what's right instead of to have the want to to sin we're gonna have the want to to do what's right now, that doesn't mean we're always going to be perfect, but I want to tell you, this is a very serious decision. Will you choose to believe for Jesus to be your Savior? You can pray and tell him that you believe in him and that you want to obey him. Prayer is talking to God. You see people fold their hands and do it, or they bow their heads and do it. But we believe that God is here, and though we can't see him, he hears our prayers, and he answers them in his own will. And we can pray and tell God right now three things. The first thing is that we can tell God that we're a sinner. 
We're sorry for our sins and we want to turn away from it. We don't want to do it anymore. We can tell God that we believe with all of our heart what Jesus did for us, that he died on the cross for my sin and that he rose again from the dead. And the third thing is we can tell God that we want to live his way. We need his help. We need his flashlight to help us to grow in understanding and knowledge to live a good life for him. If you've already believed in Jesus and you want to know more about Jesus and his life, knowing more about Jesus is like having a brighter and more cool flashlight. Isn't that great? So you can better understand who God is and how much he loves you and how much he's going to help you and how you should live in his world. It's hard right now knowing what to do. We need God's word, God's flashlight more than ever to help us to know how to live the right way. To know God better, you need to read his word, the Bible, and talk to him in prayer. Somebody once said that if you're five years old, you could read five verses a day, maybe from the book of John where we were reading. That might be a good place to start. If you're six, you read six verses. If you're seven, you read seven verses. If you're old as Miss Betsy, you read that many verses. But talking to God and reading to him, he's going to show you. You can ask him, Father, show me what you want me to know as I read my scriptures today. You can ask others to help you. You can ask your parents or your brothers and sisters, your grandparents. God will help you learn more and more and more about him. All we have to do is ask. If Will you choose to read God's word and use it as a light, as a flashlight to light up the truth of God's word in it? Will you ask him to let him illuminate to shine on the path so that you know which way to live for him if you believed in Jesus today for the first time or if you've got questions about some things that you want to know more about we would love to hear from you if you're watching on YouTube our phone number and email address is in the video description and if you're watching on Facebook you can just put comments uh, below and somebody's gonna email you or contact you I hope to see you again another time Bye-bye.